Hafidi, and welcome to our special presentation of the interview, our sit-down interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablan, who recently announced he will not be seeking a ninth term in office after a historic 16 years serving the NMI in our nation's capital. I'm regional correspondent Tomas Manglonia reporting on Saipan, and tonight we present to you our sit-down interview. Congressman, thank you so much for making time. Uh, this is your first TV interview since you announced that you're not seeking re-election? First, first interview. Thank you. Uh, would you like to address the public on your decision? Yes. Um, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, yes, of course, uh, just as I s wrote in my letter, my open letter, um, I want to thank everyone for this really extraordinary opportunity that I've been given to me to work for you, to represent you, to be your voice in Congress. And this has been a singular honor of my life. This is a job that I uh, dreamt about in 86, and 22 years later it became open, the job became open and I decided 22 years ago I was going to run for it so against all odds I won and the rest has been you know I guess eight successful elections and uh, I am I have worked hard I believe I have served the people well but it's time to pass on that job to another person someone with new energy, new ideas, and hopefully represent us well for a long time also. You're the NMI's first and only delegate. The NMI doesn't know a delegate other than you. What would you say was your most defining accomplishments in your 16 years? You know, I, I thought going in, you know, I had no pretensions going in that we had a lot of issues with the federal government that required legislation. And um, many of those were really brush fires type, I mean, it's not, uh, and so I, I put myself to that task, the, you know, of trying to fix this law, increase this formula funding, you know, sometimes not just for us, but for everyone, like, you know, we pushed in Medicaid, and that's probably one of, a major thing we did, we increased our Medicaid from, what was it, $5 million to now $36 million and every year it increases. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, $10 million to now over $64 million, and every year it increases. We decreased the mass from 50% to 17%, uh, and uh, we're still running short on money, uh, even with that. Uh, you know, food assistance has always been important to me. We've also been able to help in that area. Education uh, has been probably my uh, education and, and infrastructure has probably been my, uh, you know, things that I was consistently able to do on a, almost on a year-to-year -year basis. But having said that, uh, getting us included in the EDA program uh, after Typhoon U2 was also something that was, uh, at that time gave us the largest ever grant, uh, 200 something, $280 million, I think, that are still today being worked on. So. That's also, I, but there are other things, you know, that I don't really remember. I don't keep track. My staff were able to make me a list if you want, but I don't. But yeah, that's, um, you know, the workforce, uh, this temporary immigration thing that we have. Uh, getting China, Russia parole the first time, man, I, that felt, I mean, that. That one I thought was uh, 
necessary at that time also and probably still necessary for us today. Maybe in more secured, more organized manner, but besides the parole, yeah. We still, we need to rest so we need people coming in here and spending money. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have more of the interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablon right after this. Welcome back to our exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablon. Here's more. When people study your work uh, as it goes on in the history books as their first delegate after 16 years, what would you want to be known for? What would you want to be remembered for uh, in your time in Congress? My love for the people, my love for the Marianas. I am, nothing comes possible if you don't have that work, that commitment, that responsibility in, in, in you. Uh, for me, it's in my heart. As you know, it's been easy. You know, personally, I've got a, uh, an attitude sometimes that doesn't really fit well in politics. But I speak the truth uh -huh. as much as I can. Because sometimes the truth is not well received also. But no, as much as I can. Um, I am very grateful to Moss for all these years. The trust the people have given me, but I'm also, my goodness, very grateful to my staff. Some of who have been with me for 16 years, or 15 years. Um, they kept my work functioning, manageable, and uh, kept me sane. But uh, it's, it's, and I, you know, early on I told you that that issues to us. So one of the cause of that issues uh, as we examine it closely is the repeated back and forth, the change in time zones over this long period of time. That one affected my sleep pattern really greatly and so all of those things but no it was up uh, by my family my, my what my family gave away oh man i spent more time in dc than i away from home than i did at home but i knew my wife and i knew going into this what we we're going through it wasn't easy for her far from it but uh we're there we made it and uh we're happy I think. And you made it a point in your letter, open letter, to say that you're not leaving because you've done everything you've wanted no, no, to do. The work it. is far from oh, done, is what you said. So what, what work still needs to be done? Oh, equity. Parity, if not equity. Parity with um, programs across the nation. Uh, that's not an uh, individual effort, you know. Look. It took me 15 years, Thomas, to get Wagner Pacer out of the house. And that's not just for me. That's a bipartisan bill because it also affects American Samoa, right? And we were able to do it this year because uh, I pushed, there was an effort to do some bipartisan bill, so I pushed. Would it go uh, past the Senate? I certainly hope so. But 
There are so many other things that needs doing that will just take time. The workforce, uh, the transition workforce, I don't know where that's going to go. And we're not ready to have, a, you know, without non-US workers. Well, where do you think it's going? It's a lot more to us. Um, parity basically and a lot of programs. There are over 700 federal programs that apply to the territories and in those itself there are many that apply to some and not to the others and there's well, one that applies to us and not to the rest for example SSI and I'm supporting the effort to bring SSI to the islands to the other districts too but uh, there are many other things that needs continued constant effort. There are work in Congress where every Congress, a different group, heads the effort, you know, where it takes a while to uh, build effort, Congress after Congress after Congress, just to co bring the coalition together, not just in Congress, but all set groups to support the bill, get it passed, difficult bills too. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have more of the interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablon right after this. Welcome back to our exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablan. Here's more. And speaking of uh, coalitions, you've done a lot of coalition building in the past two, uh, in the past almost nearly two decades. Uh, one thing you wrote in your letter is uh, you leave Congress believing you've been able to establish the CNMI as a respected member of the American political family. In Congress, yes, sir. I and think so. The next delegate will fortunately inherit that from you. Certainly. Um, and, and, and also establish themselves and their own names. Tell us a little bit about the coalition building you've been able to do and the relationships you've been able to establish with the CNMI and, and um, some big names in Congress as well. Big names in Congress. Uh, you know, I don't want to drop names to us, but uh, You, you, you know, you join, you join, say, a caucus, for example, because there's common interest there. And there are, there are many caucuses. And maybe those caucuses don't meet often, or but, uh, you know, you remember that caucus, the staff have already on that issue. There's already different groups working on certain things. All of these things where we have an interest. Um, There are things that delegates are really, you know, hey, there are also members of Congress who can't get an appointment with the president, for example. They have to go through the several levels, you know, and meet with legislative affairs, and it may send you to public engagement, different levels, right? You're not just going to ask and get a phone call even. And so you build trust with leadership for example or people who are very respected and you turn to them for help. I had no hesitation and uh, but the former majority leader Eric Cantor, majority Republican majority leader, he helped me on two occasions. I mean he didn't just help me, he took the task and says we'll get this done for you. Republican. I had to ask. I had no one else to go to. You know Recently, I had to ask uh, Speaker Emerita, how do you say that? Uh, Speaker Pelosi for help on something. And uh, she did. She wouldn't have done that if there was no trust. I mean, if it's not like, uh, well, who is this? And it's like, I need your help in, and uh, got that. So you've been able to work with both sides of the aisle? Of course, I have to. I'm a delegate. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have more of the interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablon right after this.
Welcome back to our exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Congressman Gregorio Sablan. Here's more. Is there anyone in particular you'd like to see run, whether that's in the Democratic Party, your party, or elsewhere in the CNMI? What's your viewpoint on who's the next delegate? It's really not up to me to decide, Tomas. I, um... <laughs> I don't know what people would say uh, the person you support will be the winner. Hello? Excuse me? I don't believe in that, Tomas. If you watched all my campaigns since the very beginning, I was not associated with groups. I was just with friends, basically. Uh, we had a committee that basically met once a month or something and uh, it's more like a competition for who has the best food in the potluck you know because we potluck right the meetings then it was really uh, but it was a good group and I went out as often and as much as I can to knock on people's door the next delegate will be I think decided by who works the hardest and uh, I think there's still other names that may come up. I don't know. I really don't know. I've, you know, we've, I've heard of three. I've heard of maybe a fourth name, but I, I don't know. It's January. So you'll endorse someone eventually. It's just a no, not necessarily. I mean, why? I mean, I would vote. I will vote for someone. Uh, endorse? No, no, I don't know. Not necessarily. Let's see. Let's let's get the candidates to introduce themselves to the public, and that includes me. So it's not necessarily that the Democratic nominee is your nominee. Oh no, no! Don't say that too. <laughs> see, I'm just not making commitment right now. What's your advice to the next person who sits in, the, in Congress? Well, keep your head down and work. Uh, you know. Uh, remember that. Keep in mind also that people there, uh, many many members and staff, have long memories. So, you know, just keep your head down and work. I mean, look, whoever we decide as who is our next delegate is someone that we I think we all must allow to do the work and also evaluate from that first two years but let's let I would like the candidates to make their arguments uh, who why they're they're the best choice for the people and uh, of course I'm listening and uh, I'm reading and I'm listening and uh, no, but don't discount that I won't support the Democratic nominee. Just not at this interview. Okay. Hey, I gave you this interview before anybody, so I don't have to owe you anymore, right? I don't owe you. <laughs> Hopefully it's not your last interview, though. I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in what you think happens after you leave. Well, oh, they'll be work the most. They'll work out. They'll work out. It has to. There's no other way. If it doesn't work out, then we'll have to change that person. Mm -hmm. It has to work. I mean, uh, the most it's hard. Because with me, it was like people thought that if I, we needed 15 million for something, just introduce a bill, get it passed like they do here, you know, and then just call your friend in the Senate and, hey, I have a bill there, call a session. And, so people here, the expectations was really high and I had to temper that and also at the same time try as much as I can to meet that where the true need were actually there. Water, sewer money, education, health, food. Uh, you know, we're trying to help CHC as much as, as we can. I mean, even paying for their five million dollar parking lot. Everybody drives to work. I'm trying to help. What you call this the transit too? Those people have been getting good money from efforts that I do. 
because people need to read, write the boss. It's too many cars. But those are the things that we've been able to hopefully have an impact on. There's a possibility our next delegate will be also our first Republican delegate. Uh, with the composition of Congress, I, I know the elections are also coming up in the states, but how, how do the dynamics you think influence kind of our seat at the table in Congress? I prefer that because, you know, Democrats are going to be in the majority in the House, so I prefer that it, a Democrat selected from here to eternity, if you're asking me. I, to ask for the Marianas, the Democratic Party goals and objectives is most beneficial for our people here. How many of the Republican Trump tax cuts benefited people here? How many people were benefited from that, really? Democratic objectives, their priorities are what serves our people here. So yeah, based on priorities, I prefer that, you know, uh, the Democrats get selected. But, uh, yeah, I hope in the next Congress is going to be a Democratic majority. So, uh, be nice if we be a Democratic member. But if not, they're not going to take it out on us, but we'll have less opportunity to, you know, work behind, uh, work behind in committees and things like that to get some of the things we need. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you to Congressman Sablon for his time. I'm Tomas Manglonia reporting on Saipan. Thank you.